Investing isn't just about handing over your money, it's about much more. From unraveling the mystery of dividends to questioning the supremacy of growth, are you ready to explore how to intelligently build passive income? Get ready for an in-depth analysis. This is Passive Income, where we turn dreams into streams of income. Within the active investing universe, there's a persistent criticism of those who focus on dividends. Dividends aren't free money, they come out of the stock price. This comment, while seemingly simple, contains a fundamental truth that deserves closer examination. Let's consider a stock trading at $100. On October 1st, the company announced an additional $5 in cash earnings per share. However, they only plan to retain $1 in retained earnings for future business projects and pay out the remaining $4 per share as a dividend to the shareholders who own it on October 11th. On the ex-dividend date, let's say it's October 9th, a process is triggered that directly affects stock prices. Those who want to receive the dividend must buy the stock before the end of October 8th. On October 8th, the stock should be trading at 105 divided into future earnings of $100, new retained earnings of $1, and a dividend of $4. On October 9th, the stock becomes X dividend, meaning that new shareholders will not receive the dividend and thus will not be paying an additional price for something they will not get. The stock should then trade around 101, reflecting future earnings and retained earnings. When critics argue that dividends come out of the stock price, they are correct. This is not a process of free money. Dividends represent the profits generated by the company and return to shareholders. But that's not the whole story. The crucial difference between a company that pays dividends and one that doesn't is that shareholders are free to decide how to allocate their share of the profits. They can choose to take those dividends as income, reinvest them in new opportunities, or even plow them back into the same company if they trust its track record. So while dividends affect stock prices, they also offer investors a strategic choice about the fate of their earnings. It's important to understand that paying dividends is not simply an admission that the company lacks innovative ideas. Rather, it represents a strategic capital allocation decision. When a company chooses to distribute a portion of its earnings to shareholders, it does so with the confidence that retaining all earnings may not be the best long-term strategy. The consistent payment of dividends not only indicates financial stability but also suggests that the company has reached a level of maturity and predictability in its operations. Companies that have established a track record of increasing dividends over time not only demonstrate the strength of their business model but also provide investors with a steady source of income. The narrative of a lack of profitable growth ideas overlooks the reality that growth is not the only indicator of business success. Financial stability and the ability to generate consistent cash flows can be equally valuable. Moreover, some companies can continue to innovate and grow in their respective industries while rewarding shareholders with dividends, even after reaching maturity. It's important to remember that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to investing. Different investors have different objectives and risk tolerances. For those looking for a mix of growth and stability, dividend-paying stocks can offer the best of both worlds. Not only do these stocks provide a steady stream of income, but they also have the potential for capital appreciation as the company continues to grow. In this regard, paying dividends should not be seen as a lack of ideas, but rather as a deliberate strategy to balance future growth with current rewards for shareholders. Moreover, the track record of successful companies that have maintained dividends while continuing to innovate challenges, the simplistic narrative that dividends equate to foregoing growth. It's worth noting that companies that choose not to pay dividends face their own challenges and criticisms. By retaining all earnings, these companies are expected to aggressively reinvest in growth opportunities. However, this strategy doesn't always guarantee success, and investors must have confidence in management's ability to make sound decisions. You don't need dividends, you can always sell shares. This statement highlights an alternative perspective. Liquidity by selling assets rather than relying on regular dividend payments, however. As with all investment strategies, the reality is more complex than this simplistic statement suggests. At the heart of this statement is the idea that instead of receiving regular dividend payments, investors can simply sell a portion of their shares when they need cash. In theory, this provides flexibility to adapt to changing financial needs without relying on regular dividend income. While obtaining liquidity by selling shares can be a valid option, there are several important considerations that are often overlooked in this statement. First. Selling shares involves market timing and may be subject to its volatility. Depending on the timing of the sale, investors may incur capital gains or losses, which will directly affect the amount of cash they receive. 
Market volatility is a constant, and investors who rely solely on selling shares for liquidity are exposed to market fluctuations. This reliance can lead to impulsive decisions based on market conditions rather than real financial needs. In contrast, dividend-paying stocks provide a more predictable and stable source of income. Investors can plan their cash flows with greater certainty, regardless of market conditions. This is particularly important in times of volatility, when the stability of dividends can act as a buffer against market fluctuations. Another important consideration is tax. Gains on the sale of shares may be subject to capital gains tax, reducing the net amount received by the investor. On the other hand, dividends may have their own tax implications, but the tax structure can vary depending on the jurisdiction and the duration of stock ownership. In addition, selling shares reduces the investor's ownership interest in the company. This can be significant if it's a company in which the investor has a strong long-term conviction. Depending on the company and market performance, selling shares may result in losing a stake in a company that continues to grow and create value. The you-don't-need-dividends argument also overlooks investor psychology. Decisions to sell stocks can be influenced by emotions and market conditions at any given time. In contrast, the peace of mind that comes from receiving regular dividends can help reduce the anxiety and panic associated with market volatility. The debate between the proponents of growth stocks and the proponents of dividend-paying value stocks leads to the firm assertion that, in the long run, growth stocks will always outperform dividend-paying value stocks. This assertion, rooted in the theory of perpetual growth, warrants critical examination to understand the complexities of these contrasting investment strategies. At the heart of this assertion is a belief in the inherent ability of growth stocks to deliver superior returns over time. Investors who subscribe to this theory argue that continuously growing companies reinvest their earnings to expand, thereby generating a steady increase in stock value. To evaluate this perspective, let's examine the historical performance of three Vanguard funds over a period of more than 25 years. The Vanguard Growth Index Fund, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, and the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, ticker symbol VYM. During this long period, the Growth Index Fund had a compound annual growth rate of 11.37% outperforming the Dividend Appreciation ETF, that performed at 9.07%, and the High Dividend Yield ETF, which performed at 7.77%. It is important to recognize that past performance is no guarantee of future results, and that market history is full of volatility. The success of growth stocks during this particular period can be attributed in part to various periods of near-zero interest rates, which favored growth companies. However, this statement overlooks a fundamental truth. There is no universally superior investment strategy. The choice between growth stocks and dividend-paying value stocks depends largely on an investor's objectives and risk tolerance. Moreover, the statement does not take into account active portfolio management where investors can adjust their approach based on market conditions. Consider, for example, the inherent volatility of growth stocks. While they can offer significant returns, they are also subject to extreme price swings. Market emotions can influence investors' impulsive decisions, as seen in the case of Facebook or Meta in 2021. Despite its previous success, the stock experienced dramatic swings from $166 to $380 and then to $90 over a five-year period. In contrast, dividend-paying value stocks represented by McDonald's and Starbucks posted returns of 80.86% and 77.09%, respectively, outperforming the growth ETF over the same period. These companies not only provided solid returns, but also regular income through dividends. Diversification and active portfolio management are critical to long-term success. Combining growth stocks in an index fund with dividend-paying value stocks can provide a balanced strategy. The reality is that growth stocks and dividend-paying value stocks can coexist in a well-structured portfolio, providing a balance between capital appreciation and predictable income streams. Furthermore, this statement tends to generalize and overlooks iconic companies like Google, Amazon, and Berkshire Hathaway that have never paid dividends but have been phenomenally successful. The key is to understand that every company and every investor is unique, and there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Well, there you have it, folks, the truth about dividend stocks versus growth stocks. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to Passive Income and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Until next time, keep dreaming.